Garvin, would you give the invocation, please? Yes, sir. Please stand. So, Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our well-being. We ask now that you guide us as we make the season for our nation. We pray especially for our new leadership of our country. We pray that you would guide them in the way that would make us a great country again. Forgive us for sin. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Roll call, please. Matt Baker. Here. Tara Callan Watts. Ahani. Bill England. Here. Bill John Baker. Harley Buzzard. Here. Julia Coates. Here. Bradley Cobb. Ahani. Joe Crittenden. Jody Fishinghop. Meredith Braley. Here. Janelle Fulbright. Don Garvin. Chuck Hoskin Jr. Here. China Glory Jordan. Curtis Snell. Here. Chris So. Present. David Thornton. Okay, we do have a quorum. And I'll entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes of the November 20th regular session. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion here. Next, under reports, our treasurer, Ms. Catcher. Good morning. Um, you should have a copy of my written report. If anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer it. Any questions of Ms. Catcher? You're getting off easy. Thank you. Cherokee Nation Enterprises. Do we have anyone from CNE? Sean. several. Uh, what happened overnight? There were no questions last night, and so there's questions, but uh, we're here to report in November the financial statements I've called Guy. They're, they're not ready yet. Uh, we'll uh, get those out to you, I, I'm sure, this week. Only they try to have them out by the 15th. But uh, again, uh, November was uh, a soft month compared to uh, uh, October, right. running about the same, but it was more than last year. And uh, uh, like I said last night, we expect that trend to continue following what it did last year and the years before through through January. Then February, March, April, those are uh, good months. July is the best. And, and uh, you know, we don't see anything yet that's, going, that's telling us any different. So from a, a, a financial standpoint, that's, that's where we are. With those months, um, construction-wise, um, things continue along. I, I told you that we opened the gaming floor at Catoosa uh, yesterday, which I didn't get into it last night. But uh, people really worked hard Sunday to recover from a, a an accident, a construction accident on Saturday. I got a call that the wind had blown, got in under one of the uh, emphases on I think the fourth floor of the new tower on the west side and uh, blew the blew it loose, uh, the siding loose, and it came across and hit the um, existing hotel on the south side and uh, damaged one of those rooms, pushed the wall in. Uh, there were no guests anywhere that uh, were uh, affected by it. However, we did on the east side as a precautionary measure uh, evacuate the hotel. We east side of the hotel, we relocated some of those guests over at the Holiday Inn uh, just as a precautionary measure, we sent our uh, people home that were working on all the cleanup uh, because the wind forecast was still for that day and the next day uh, to be very high, and, and uh, we just didn't want to take a chance on anything else happening. Uh, they couldn't on that day. They couldn't get up there and do anything because uh, there was a safety issue with 
the winds and having a guy up on a hoist. So we just hunkered down, sent everybody home. There were uh, safety people were out there. I talked to Jamie Hummingbird, made sure he was aware on Saturday. Uh, as soon as I got a notification, and uh, then uh, I believe yesterday morning they got up early, or maybe it was Sunday morning, and uh, uh, fastened down what was left up there and then began the repairs. So uh, no one was injured or, or anything. So anyway, the floor opened. It looks great. And as soon as you get a chance, we'd be happy to have you up there. Um, West Siloam, we're uh, starting, I think, the demo either today or tomorrow, weather permitting, on the old casino. So if there are any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer those. Any questions of Mr. Slate? Mr. Hoskin. Hey, um, I read recently, and you may have mentioned last night, about CNE. <coughs> giving the donations to community groups. I think there was something in the paper about it. Uh, it was to the Angel Tree. To the Angel Tree. But I thought that there was a purchase of that Pauline's restaurant and some of the surplus items were given to community groups. Was that, uh, that happened recently? We're scheduled for demo. I don't know if those groups have come through yet. They may have. Okay. They're scheduled for demo at the end of the month, and Pauline's is January 10th, I believe. My question is kind of more general nature. During the times when you do give surplus property to community groups, is there a standard procedure that you use when you let the community groups know? I mean, we have a, we have a, I guess a finite number of community groups, and we know how to reach them. Is there a protocol where you send that word to those groups, give them the opportunity to come get those items? Well, if uh, Gina's still here, I'll let her answer that because she's the one that takes care of that. Yes. We actually have a written policy. And the policy creates a hierarchy for donations to Cherokee Nation entities, so on and so forth. So basically, the policy says I must contact Cherokee Nation and its entities first. And I do have contacts in uh, Housing Rehab, Charlie Soap's group, blah, 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 um, Norma Merriman's group. And then after that, I go to the groups that were funded by Cherokee Nation grants, so the community buildings community groups, all of those second. And then after that, I allow the items, if we have anything left over, to be available to other um, entities outside of the Cherokee Nation. Um, we did give items from um, Pizza Hut to two community groups uh, that are grant recipients from Cherokee Nation. We have not done Pauline's yet. We won't do that until January when they vacate. And we did give the majority of all of the fixtures and items at West Salem Springs Casino <coughs> to housing rehab here at Cherokee Nation. You know, the community groups is essentially first come, first serve when you get to that point. Yes, I contact Willard Mounts' group, and Willard Mounts is the one who contacts <coughs> all the community buildings and gives them a list and says these are the items that we have available. Would any of you like those? And then they contact us back. Okay, thank you. Thank you, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, I've got questions for both of you, but so Gina can sit down. Um, Chelsea Boys and Girls Club, I know, needs a fridge, like a commercial refrigerator, so that they can pass their health code inspections, and we give them money as a tribe. But I don't think they would be on that list and stuff. So, if it's possible, and I, I'm going to guess Chuck will agree, I would like included on the list because I hear about and see things that I don't think our staff is, and the community groups are not always consistent in who gets that information and disperses it in making decisions. So if at all possible, I would like to be have a view of it so I can help facilitate because I think there's missed opportunities in my area, it sounds like, in checks. Well, so normally that's those things, though, are taken by Cherokee Nation before we even get to like a Chelsea Boys and Girls Club because there's such a need out there for these community buildings that we're, we're building with Cherokee Nation funds that that's normally where things like refrigerators, stoves, water heaters, bathroom fixtures are always almost always taken out like by that. The RCCA would qualify for that and I don't see any of that when that comes through and I think he's got some similar stuff so I don't know that they're Whoever the officer is that's getting it is not forwarding it out so that there's a group decision or there's a view of well, we it. Can it. Okay, and that's what, thank you. Then my other question is for Sean. Um, how, why are we not getting alerts as a council and how are we going to get alerts as a council 
and it, or who's the staff person assigned to make sure that we get council information quickly on facts about power outages, about buildings getting hit, and those kind of things? Well, uh, if you're talking on the construction side, I don't think that that's been addressed in terms of a notification to council. Uh, we had an issue uh, with uh, the power outage and the gaming commission not getting uh, proper notification uh, back in November, and I think we've got that addressed. And uh, you know, I went, went the extra step for me personally on Saturday to call Jamie just to make sure, even though they had people there on the floor. Uh, but as <clears throat> as a formal thing, there's not anything formal. If you would like for us to to uh, you know put something together where there's uh, some sort of uh, burst or something like that on things, then I'm sure we can address that. Uh, I guess just probably work with you to understand uh, uh, what kind of issues you want to be respond, uh, alerted to, because there's stuff going on 24-7. I think Bill said it best. We don't know if we want to know if somebody individual breaks their leg or does something, but if it's mm -hmm. a severe incident where there's going to be rumors, mm -hmm. we would like factual information. I think Mr. Hembry wanted yes, to Henry. inject him. What I would recommend is uh, for uh, for me to get with, with, with counselors and to uh, formulate uh, the type of uh, information that is important to you, and we will uh, uh, create a uh, 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 sort of a priority list of certain things that happen. And that way, for at the very least, of the advisory board of <coughs> members of uh, Cherokee and Nation yeah. Enterprises should be, because that, that's the, the idea for, for the uh, uh, for the advisory board members is to be a conduit of information from the board of directors to the council, so those people need to be notified. You know, uh, regardless of what the you know whether it's uh, sensitive information or not, and then we develop uh, another list of that can be burst out to all the counselors, uh, something to that effect. But we can work on some type of criteria uh, to, to formulate to formulate that. Well, and I guess I don't understand why. It's, I mean, maybe it's just the holidays and everybody's stressed, but. I didn't think that this would be that complicated of a question, but we had a fire at Fort Gibson that I heard a rumor about until I asked. I wouldn't have any information, and it turned out to be nothing. But it would have been nice to have a little alert that said there has been a minor fire, no injuries at Fort Gibson. Just be aware, and it's all under control. <laughs> then there was a three- to four-hour power outage on a major gaming day during Thanksgiving. We had no alert. I guess that wasn't considered a major deal. Uh, well, I can assure you it was considered a major deal. But well, we now, didn't get an alert, so okay. we, I mean, well, it, it didn't, I'm I guess saying it wasn't significant. We'll be glad to formalize what you okay. responded to. We're not trying to keep anything secret up there. And, uh, you know, things go on all the time. And I think what we can do is Gina heads up our communications uh, area, and we'll formalize a policy working with uh, Todd, and um, we can just put that in form of some sort of burst either over the the uh, internet computer system or maybe to a Blackberry or we, I mean, phones or something like that. Text. I don't know. That, I'm the last person to... You missed the earlier meeting. So. Am I, should I be glad about that? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. We won't go there then. Okay. Okay. Mr. Garvin. <clears throat> Uh, Sean, I read a couple of different questions on the uh, casino was smoke free, and I thought that was a mistake. Was it? Well, that's that's half true to Kara's point. Uh, <laughs> about half of the new casino is that like has it. Sort of pregnant? Or yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think it was a letter to the editor. She was really great, and I just. Uh, on, on the new casino at, at Catoosa, about half of that floor is smoke free. And we'll, we'll just see how it works. So, uh, you know, we have a lot of people that say they won't come to the casino uh, because of what they perceive as a smoke issue in the past. And so a lot of the public facilities are all, all moving to smoke free. And so we were just doing this as a test to see how it works out. 
numbers are going to drive it. Seems like 90% of the gamblers are smokers, though. Yes. Ninety so, percent of the people that are there that are gambling are smoking. The question is, how many people aren't coming to the casino because of the smoke that that would? And that's what we've tried to address there with our uh, new facilities: is smoke removal and then uh, a smoke-free zone to try to help alleviate that and maybe invite people in that wouldn't ordinarily come. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure, Mr. Sutton. Yes. John, we've got a uh, report from the Gaming Commission that, that kind of highlighted the incident on the, the Thanksgiving Day you know, power outage and so forth. And uh, just reviewing that report, there seems to be uh, some open-ended questions about is, is the problem been resolved? Uh, has it been addressed to, in totality uh, to uh, have backup power? Uh, there's a lot of concerns that I have based upon that report, and it's, it's you know, third party. But uh, what is uh, your board directed you to do, or your organization, as far as follow up on this on this incident? And if so, what what types of things did you learn through this experience that you're specifically addressing right now in regards to uh, making sure that you know, for example, the surveillance equipment. And I don't know if this is fact or not. But according to their report, it says that we lost all surveillance. I'm, and I'm just assuming that it's in, in the whole hotel. So my question is, is, what potentially was going on during this time? Is the question that sort of comes up to me. And, you know, I, I would think that if you're going to have UPS systems or backup generators, things like that, uh, there's a potential for any um, you know, major piece of equipment to fail. So. What, what did we learn through this, or, or you know, is the facility manager uh, has got this problem resolved, or is it still, uh, do we have a, a backup power generator source or not? Yes, we've, we've always had a backup uh, generator. So did it fail? Uh, and, uh, or did it? The generator didn't fail. What happened was a flywheel, which sets between AEP, the, our utility provider, right. and um, our generator and all of our computer systems, a flywheel sits there. What that flywheel does is if we ever have a, a big hit on power or something, its, its purpose is to protect um, all of our systems from receiving that jolt and frying the system. And I'm probably the last person to try to explain technology to anybody. Uh, but something in that flywheel uh, crashed and when that did it uh, the generator it didn't send a notice to the generator to come on and the purpose of the flywheel is to take that hit give 30 seconds for the generator to come on and not lose any power at all. They have like an automatic or a mm -hmm. manual switch so, so nobody was trained or thought to go and hit the, the manual switch on the generator or is that not an option? Or? In this case that wasn't an option uh, and I think probably before I go telling half truths uh, and guessing again since I don't have facilities here to stand up and explain it, uh, what I can do is forward you the uh, reports. Okay, that's maybe there from, was a formal report. That yes, was there, out. there's a formal report. I don't think that Star uh, Energy or Star Electric has identified for sure what caused the problem, other than something in the flywheel uh, came loose, and it was uh, something that they say they hadn't seen before. I will say this: that that um, that, that generator and the flywheel have had problems you know since we put it in from time to time and it may just be that that that's a defective flywheel and we keep replacing pieces every time so something happens. What I'm hearing is the problem still hasn't been resolved and it's still an issue that... No, I, I didn't say that. I said what I don't know is what the final resolution or problem identification was. So it's been fixed. The flywheel's fixed and it's back up and uh, and then on the new side, we have another generator and flywheel over there. So they're two separate things. There. And I'll, I'll get the report out to everybody. Mr. Snell. Sean, what's your uh, policies on charitable donations? Where are our policies? What are, on? Policies? What are our, our policies? 
we we don't uh, we don't do charitable donations. I think that's that's the policy. We do some sponsorships, uh, but they have to be for a very specific purpose that we can point back to that we're getting a, an advertising promotional benefit back on. Uh, you know, our instructions are that the nation and the council, the administration and the council, kind of handle those. Well, reporters here like uh, we have bull rider, bronc rider, professional freshman. Basically, they want logos and their mm -hmm. equipment and so forth. Do you all sponsor something in that effect? Or you don't no, we really don't. We uh, get a lot of requests from people who sponsor softball teams, football teams, and things like that. And we just uh, we just don't do that. We've been instructed to, you know, let that occur at this level, at the administration level. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Buzzer. Yeah, Sean, I've got just a couple of questions for you and a comment. Um, first of all, on the notification, I want to uh, back up what the council Watts is saying about the notification. We would like to know that because it's rather embarrassing when you have people call a council member and you don't know what's going on. So I just want to say that. Uh, the other thing is uh, you said the flywheel is fixed. Has it been tested? Does it work? I believe that it has been tested and it is working. Uh, but I will confirm that and we'll send you uh, the write-up of the initial issue. I don't, uh, when I checked on that last week, uh, what I heard was Star Electric hasn't come back and said this is what caused this problem. They said they've never seen this before or anything like this. And where are they out of? Uh, I believe Star's out of Tulsa. Out of Tulsa. Okay. The other thing is... Uh, and I made this uh, comment at the earlier meeting about bonuses. It seems as though there was a lapse of uh, notification to the Gaming Commission on what happened on, on November when the power outage was going, <coughs> that they weren't called up to make the initial clearance on what they're supposed to do. But my comment was, uh, and I'm not telling you how to run the business up there, but it's about the bonuses for employees. Mm -hmm. Those people, I understand, they have a good bonus program for employees at CNA. I just think that uh, something needs to be done to remind employees about their responsibilities to whoever, whether it's the Gaming Commission or the Cherokee Nation, whoever. But you know, I just want to put that in as a word that we need to take a look and see there's some type of action to get somebody's attention about who they're supposed to notify. But that's just a comment. I'm not telling you how to run a business. Okay. Thank I'll, you. I'll take that back. Pardon. Thank you. Yeah. On the sponsorship, you do sponsor, is what you're saying, it's just not a corporate level decision on who to sponsor? Because I've seen sponsorships out there in the community. Yeah, that's that's a marketing, really marketing decision to our marketing department. And they go through a, an analysis of cost benefit on those things. I mean, and for and example, we dropped some recently that... <clears throat> probably won't see next year. And for example, the Will Rogers Rodeo in Benita had been sponsored. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if that's the council's now had in mind in terms of a professional, uh, you know, fisherman or something like that. But it would be the same decision making process, the cost right. benefit analysis, but the yeah. examples that he cited. Right? And I think we've dropped a lot of the rodeo stuff. Okay. And then just briefly back to the smoking. Do, does anyone else in the industry do smoke-free, and does anyone else in the market do smoke-free? There, there are a few in the industry. I couldn't tell you about the market, uh, but it's not common. And the reason uh, to what Don was saying is most of the people in there are smoking. What we're trying to go after are the people that don't come because of the smoke. And, and I don't, I don't know anything about the data on this, just anecdotal through stories. But I think in California, they ban smoking in a lot of places that you typically find smokers. And I think, in fact, uh, business didn't uh, wither on the vine. I, I, I don't know if you all analyze that at all, but um, right. it seems to me people still show up. Yeah, I think everybody's just kind of scared of that. You know, if everybody did it, everybody would, you know, be in the same boat. But 
for us to jump out there and three other casinos in the Tulsa area or two others that allow it, we'd lose we'd probably lose a, a good portion of business there. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Sean. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Merry Christmas. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Chairman, at this time I would like to amend the agenda to one add the uh, kind of the smoke shop uh, discussion that came out of uh, the <coughs> council meeting last night and secondly move the consent items up to right now along with the uh, uh, the, the mod. So, Okay. Does everyone understand the motion? Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Any opposed? Okay. Mr. Baker. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, pass the consent items in Toto, the care row, the uh, seminar care restoration, law enforcement, community assistance, and roads. And I'll put that on the motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Mr. Have some additional items to be added to okay. the consent list. In addition to on the cemetery first, in addition to the uh, uh, Elm Grove Cemetery <clears throat> District Two and the Matoka Cemetery District Eight, there's also a Fodder Cemetery in District Two as well. Uh, there are no roads this month or law enforcement. However, community assistance has several additional since the packet was sent out. Um, $500 each. Mr. Thornton is full bright visions of Christ Church for a heating unit. J School, $500, Mr. Buzzard. $1,000, Mr. Buzzard. All these, all the rest of these are Mr. Buzzard. $1,000, Delaware County Historical Society. $500, Cherokee Heritage Center. Thousand Integris Grove General Hospital, 500 Saline Preservation Association, 500 Delaware County Historical Society, 500 J Senior Citizen Center, and then there's one other one for Mr. Hoskins, 1750 Community Assistance for Ketchum Public Schools. That's all the items I have, and I would accept those. Yeah, they were on the reading. Okay. 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 Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Sure. At this time, I'd like to move that the uh, the mod be uh, passed uh, with those amendments, or with the consent items and the amendments. Do <coughs> you hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Okay. Back to our reports is Cherokee Nation Industries. Mr. Reports. Oh, Mr. Collins. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As I reported last night, our um, November financials, we had a, another loss. Uh, Three hundred ninety-one thousand dollars with a uh, year-to-date loss of six hundred ninety-four thousand, and I just wanted to try to open this up for discussion. Any questions about what you may have? Any? Just, yes, Miss Watt. I'd like to hear more about why we're not resolved on the uh, bonding issue. The bonding. Because I thought we were resolved on that. Okay. I asked Mr. Hanford to come today and. Uh, Roy is our uh, Vice President of Construction, and he's been working very closely on this matter, and I thought he might be able to give you more specifics. Yeah. <clears throat> We've got uh, uh, inquiries out to all the large insurance companies in the country. We've had some uh, uh, preliminary responses back from uh, Zurich Insurance and also Hartford Insurance. Uh, unfortunately, those two responses were not favorable to us at this point in time. Uh, the biggest issue is sovereign immunity. And it's still the same issue we had before. Uh, the partial limited waiver of sovereign immunity is not acceptable to the bonding companies. They do not want to pursue the tribe or the group within tribal court. Uh, we've tried to explain to them numerous times and uh, by numerous people the fact that we not only 
do not plan on failing in our processes here, but we do not even consider the fact of having one of our entities fall on their feet. I mean, fall on their face in this situation. But at this point, they're, with, they're considering us a startup company. Uh, they don't consider the work that we've done in the past for the tribe as uh, to be uh, uh, anything that they can relate to, uh, because we haven't really done work out on our own with for individuals outside the nation. And so that's part of the issue is that we're a startup. And then the other issue really basically is our sovereign immunity issue. And we do have one company that we're working with right now. Uh, it's Midcontinent Casualty. They're a local company here in town, uh, or actually in Tulsa. Uh, and they have a sister company called Great American, uh, of which uh, are looking at us right now. They are considering uh, bonding us to the tune of approximately $35 million, uh, in uncompleted work volume. Uh, well, is that adequate, though, for the contracts we're pursuing? I don't think it is. Anymore. Well, realistically, it, 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 it's better than nothing at this point in time. So um, we won't be able to get those 8 contracts and like the Army Corps of Engineers with that level of bonding. Is that it's really not large enough for us. Uh, when we've got 20 and we can't self-bond because I thought we had... Isn't there some method of self-bonding or something or self-insuring with like a set aside of money? A letter of credit. A letter of credit. We're, we're currently operating off of a letter of credit system right now, which is legal within the 8A system and also within all your public entities, whether it be the state or the city or the county. Uh, and that's the way we're operating right now. Of course, that takes dollar for dollar cash. If we've got a $5.3 million project like we do on Bixby as uh, Bentley Park, we have to put up $5.3 million. Uh, we currently have uh, right at $20 million worth of work uh, under contract right now, which fortunately for us, only that Bixby Park is the only one that we have bonding on. So, you know, we're pursuing the work outside the bonding market only because that's a lot of cash. You know, we have available to us approximately $10 million line of credit, of which we're, like I said, we've used up 5.3 of that. Uh, we've got 3.7 left over. So. Uh, 3.7, I mean, that might be one project or, you know, it could be three projects. But uh, the size limitations we have are, I mean, that's what they are. I mean, we just, without bonding, we can't go out and pick up another $20 million worth of work. We're capable of doing uh, our budget this year's $40 million. And we're capable of performing to that, to that <coughs> level. However, without the bonding, we're limited in access to those types of projects. Do we have a timeline on when we expect to resolve this in or? Um, I hope by January it is with McConnell. We thought we'd be resolving now, but it seems like every time we go back to the table, or that we go to January. Like every week, we get a bunch of Yeah, Yeah, I We feel favorable at McConnell's. We're going to be able to work a deal with them, but it's just you know, Mr. Carrington's working on the final details. The problem with Midcontinent here from the $35 million standpoint is that they do have the capability of going over that $35 million if they involve their sister company, which is called Great America. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Besser. Uh, yes, I was going to have uh, Brian give us a quick overview on why our losses are still coming in at that CNI. Okay. Is it due to a lot of a lot of it just revenue we budgeted the way we were structured we budgeted um, this last month we are, our budget was 10.4 million in revenue and revenue came in at 5.9 million and largely because of construction and telecom AT&T has uh, basically reduced their ordering nationwide and it's impacted our telecommunications division. Uh, the other thing was is a lot of the excess inventory, if you guys remember, the large inventory stockpile they had has been coming down quite a bit, but it's literally at the point where nothing of that is selling. So that was also a shortfall. Some of the uh, the things that we're working on to counter that, though, is as, as, I, as Roy mentioned, we're chasing pro projects that don't require bonding. And so it starts to narrow the market of what you're chasing. They are out there. Uh, we do have a, a large project that we should be awarded, hopefully here in the next week, uh, approximately $5 million, non-bonded non project. Uh, so they are out there. 
other things that we have been pursuing in all the divisions to try to grow that revenue back up to support the overhead in every division. Um, the majority of some of the other costs, some of the loss, has been inside the efficiencies in manufacturing. Uh, a lot of that business is at best break even, and we're working on those efficiencies. Some of the recent events, that, things I've had to step in and do is bring in a uh, new general manager. I've also brought in a, uh, a high-level uh, training manager, director of process improvement. Uh, he has his PhD as well as his, he's a black belt to come in and start fine-tuning the process improvements and look at our training program because it seems to be we're taking a lot longer to put a person from no experience to being experienced is taking a lot longer to get them up to a certain level of efficiency to produce what we need to produce. So we have a lot of hours that we're putting in. Uh, we've brought in another new quality manager uh, to, and we're focused on the rework, things that cause rework. Uh, I mean, you have a system, you have, a, you have a, a manufacturing system that allows zero rejects. So that is, you know, like I say, it, it's not something uh, as simple as just putting nuts and bolts together. So, anyway. On the, on the, on the retaining of the employees, I haven't noticed any reports on them, but you're not losing any employees that are already trained. Are you? Not, not typically. Maybe retiring. Typically, your your uh, your uh, employees that you're losing are typically that you know you're bringing them in, you're training them, and they probably are falling out, you know, in the first 90 days, yeah. first six months. People that may you know just may not be performing, or they just it's not the work that they really thought they wanted to be in. So that's typically where the fallout would come. I see. Mr. Okay. Collins, Thank we, you. we appreciate your time. You were done, Mr. Reservoir. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Did you have a question for Mr. Collins? No, I had a motion. Okay. okay. Um, so, thank you, Mr. Okay. Collins. Everybody, the other three remaining reports, I believe we have in writing. We're about to get inundated by employees. So, um, assuming, is there any pressing questions that must be asked in public for the remaining items here connected to businesses? For sure. <coughs> yes, okay. Uh, it concerns me about the unemployment uh, people for the Cherokees or Indian people. I noticed on report. And is anybody here to tell us what's going on? It was a uh, meeting that Jim Wilson had. Miss Kelly's group, is that who you're wanting to yes, talk with? Uh -huh. <laughs> Problems with unemployment claims. Can anybody address that? The Clear Services Office. Has. A big percentage of our Cherokee people are being denied their unemployment, and we have tried to assist them with appeals. Well, that concerns me. Diane is unable to make it in today. Uh, I will take your question to her and have her get back with you. And, uh, what is exactly getting hard as you're wanting? Uh, it's on item number 10 for Senator Wilson that had a meeting. And it says a big percentage of our Cherokee people are being denied their unemployment and we have tried to assist with the appeals. And then I have one more question for yes, John. John, over at the Flintco company in, in uh, Catoosa, does Flintco have a Native American person working on their staff? They're like we had a staff plan. In Catoosa? Yes. I believe they may have one, possibly two. Did you find out how many they do have? Yes, sir. But you're asking, Mr. Buzzard, you're asking if they're responsible for assisting with Indian hiring and employment. Yes, that would be another members. question I'd like to know. Not just do they have Indian employees on staff, which is a good question, but also do they have one allocated to make sure Indian preference by Flintco is the thing I'm here to Okay, uh, what do you mean? Is by Flintco hiring or the new people coming on to work there? Well, both. Okay, the new people coming on to work there run through my staff, just like they always have been through the job bank list or referrals from the uh, Katusa office as well and career services. Well, I'd just like to know what they've got on staff there at the central office there and what their job uh, what their job duties are. John, could you or Miss Diane provide the us in writing at the next month's meeting? Yes, you want every staff member what they do, correct? Uh, native. Yes. Native. Okay. Well, you want an overall report on how many they have and how what percentage yes, uh -huh. Indian to. Mm -hmm. Were there any other questions, Mr. Buzzer? Uh, no, that'd be all. I'm really interested in about the unemployment issue. 
Because I've had several people that are native people that's not getting the unemployment checks, and it's certainly going to be a problem as the holidays come down. So if we could get a uh, answer on that fairly quick, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Overacker. The only uh, the two business <coughs> items remaining is old business. So I believe I have a motion on the Cherokee Artists Association funding. Do I hear? And there's a second from Joe. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? That table to next month. The next item is tobacco machine and swips, and I believe you have some handouts for us. And if we can uh, try to limit this in a. <coughs> Yule and Brad will help us pass those out so we can keep this moving. I, I was just requested to bring a map, which is uh, what I'm handing out there, that shows all the shops. And the ones that are in green are the board, what's considered a border shop, and the ones that are in yellow are the five exception shops. Okay, and Mr. Baker has a question for you, Sharon. Uh, okay. Let her finish. I, I wanted to take my time and yield to Tara. To, she's got some stuff to hand out as well that uh, it just for the council to review over the next week, couple of weeks or so. And I thought she wants to address it. So well. Sharon, were you done? Yeah, I just, I was asked to give the okay. map unless you have questions on yep. the map. <laughs> unless somebody has a question on the map for Sharon. Or if there's any other additional information that you need from my office, please let me know. We'll have we'll have them email you or have Shelly or Gail or somebody. So thank you, Sharon. We appreciate all your hard work and your staff. Tara, did you want to come on up? Thank you. Um, I'll start passing these out. What I have given you is this particularly on my shop because I am one of the five that's in question. I have October of 07 and October of 08 total um, purchases of cigarettes as a comparison. I have November. I've tried to highlight it. I didn't have much time, so I did this on the road on the way. Um, I also have, since I don't have a complete December yet, but I have December of 07. And then I have the spreadsheet that I have started for December of 08 to show you how many cartons of cigarettes have been purchased versus December of 07 so far. This one will make the biggest impact, 3,000 cartons compared to 19,000. Um, just some other information. I, I am about 95% Cherokee in my store. I just recently, because of this, this will show you, I had to cancel their health insurance, so they're back on their Cherokee Nation health coverage now. Um, just to let you know what kind of an impact it's had. Yesterday we got the uh, new tobacco in for the new tobacco rate. Not, not to do with cigarettes, but just the tobacco. And this is my cost change sheet. And this is exactly what I did yesterday. You can see from my old cost and new cost how my margins have changed. Some of them that I thought I had a 20% markup are now negative 13 point whatever. So it'll just show you what an impact this has made. I've also only bought 507 cartons of uh, tobacco. We've lost control of the meeting. Yeah. I have. Hold on just a minute. Yeah. I didn't realize that it was all. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I made a bunch of copies. So. Uh, yeah, we don't okay. have enough of these either. Hold on just a moment. From, let's just pass around the table instead of getting in the middle. So, Mr. Evans, I'm going <laughs> to kick you out of the middle. So, okay, I need to make sure, first of all, on handouts. Well, yeah, everything I put in a clip was the same. So, Tara, how many handouts do you have? Um, you should have a handout from October of 2007 and October of 2008 of the, Cherokee of the report I sent to the Cherokee Nation. I have, I have five. Two. I have five handouts. Well, we have the one map, which is Sharon Swifton, and then you should well, have a six. six county Sharon. I'm sorry. You should have this letter, correct? Yes. And then I have a November 2008 twice. Okay, this should be October of 2007-2008, November 2007-2008. And December, two spreadsheets of what I've bought so far, and then December of 2007, the Cherokee Nation report. Madam Secretary, do you understand? Are you clear? Because I'm not. Here. There's two Novembers of two years. October's, Novembers, December's one Cherokee Nation report and spreadsheets from Sunflower and Discount, what I've bought so far in December, since it's not a completed month. And there should be a letter in there from principal, and then a cost change report. 
Yeah. Chair, we'll, we'll need to keep moving, but what's the significance of all these? This all is just showing what has changed and how much we have dropped since we've had to raise our prices. Um, the next thing I've got this is, is September of 08, an invoice, and I've just highlighted a few prices of what our prices were in September. And the next copy is December, my invoice that I just got in December after the prices have been raised. And I highlighted some so that you can see. Madam Chair, okay. this is number seven and eight. The, the thing that I'm doing is my marbles as of today are $33.50. My competition up the highway, which is Joe's competition also, they're still in 20s, okay. 29. I, I greatly appreciate all the information as well as I'm sure the committee does too. We will need to work with you after this meeting to straighten out how many handouts because I've got 10 at this point. I have multiple questions from the committee starting with Mr. Hoskins. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I, I, this is more of a, I, I, my sense is we're short on time at this meeting, and I don't know if I have a question for you yet, Tara, but just those me a couple of comments. It seems to me there's a handful of issues, one of which is are we going to, pursuant to the compact, uh, rebate to border shops? Secondly, do border shops include the so-called exception shops, which the governor's letter as of last Friday was supposed to clarify, which frankly did not clarify. Uh, that's a separate issue. It's another issue we've got to resolve. Uh, thirdly, just on behalf of Councilman Thornton, he, he's concerned about other smoke shops that aren't border smoke shops, that aren't exception smoke shops, whether we should and can legally uh, do anything to help those smoke shops. I think if he were here, he'd voice those concerns, and he wants the opportunity to do it before we pass anything, and I have to respect that. Um, so those are among the issues. Um, but I do have a question for either Sharon or Secretary Knight. Are we going back to the governor to say that that letter doesn't get it, or are we going to be satisfied that that letter is the best we're going to get? With Secretary to Knight or Ms. Swepson, did you want to answer that question? Um, I did speak with Chief Smith this morning. And he did say that we would go back to the governor's office. He, he said hopefully by next week sometime to try to go back and clarify that letter because the letter is not what we asked for. So it is my understanding that we are going to try to go back via either a meeting or a phone call or something and get back to the governor's office. And, and my recommendation to the chief, is, I mean, last time it, it sounds like it was a phone call to the uh, Oklahoma State Treasurer. And everybody in this room knows you can have a phone call somebody and everybody comes up with a different impression. I think it makes perfect sense to put this in writing, specifically what we want. I think everybody's clear about what we want. Now, that way, it's very clear to the governor if he falls short again, why he fell short. I think right now, if he went to the governor, he might say, well, I, I, thought, I did what I thought you wanted. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Hoskins, do you have a recommendation that we need to share with Secretary Knight to extend to the chief? on what the next step in action forward because this continues to linger and I'd like to get it's we need to continue the motion to resolve this well I, I think I mean I, I haven't written it out but I think you can I think I think they know exactly what needs to be asked we need to restore the status quo that existed under the old compact as it relates to exception shops in fancier words than that if I may, I, th I think the recommendation is to Chief that uh, he inquire with the governor's office in writing this time as opposed to a verbal uh, conversation. So uh, I'll take that recommendation. Here. And will we be alerted by email um, with, at, during yeah, those steps? If the letter comes from the Chief, I'll certainly copy this body on that. Much appreciated, Secretary Knight. Thank you, Sharon. Yes, Mr. Hoskins. Thank you, Madam Chair. And then with respect to the smoke shop representatives, I, I appreciate that you all braved the weather to come up here. I think what the committee, I can't speak for the committee, but certainly from where I say it, what we need to hear is the reasons that the council ought to rebate under the compact. It, it's not inevitable that we rebate under the compact. It's not required. It's an option that's granted to us, and we need compelling policy reasons to do that. But I think you can take the idea, that, I think you can take as a sign that we didn't have sufficient reasons the fact that the legislation yesterday was tabled. Additionally, we have the lingering uh, exceptions issue that's lingering. That's mudding the waters, frankly, and it's, uh, you know, it was beyond our control yesterday. But that's what we have to hear. Uh, we have to hear here, uh, a compelling reason why uh, we need to rebate to the border shops. If that includes the exception shops, so be it. Um, and I think 
we need to move quickly because I, I think you, you can you can look that the health insurance is being cut at at least one smoke shop and, and they don't do that lightly. Mr. Hoskins, uh, would it be okay if you put some of these concerns and outline them in writing for I all would. of us? And yeah, I would. Include the chief. That way we can. Did any other members of this body have questions concerning the tobacco? Yeah. Mr. Soap. Mr. Chair, could you confirm that? Uh, and, and break down how many shops we have that are affected. I mean, I'm just doing a quick count on our sheet, but I'm coming up with about half of the shops are in question and the other half aren't. Okay, the yellow ones are the ones that are in question, okay. those five shops. Five shops are those are what we call exception shops, and those are the and five and that's shops because that because they got left out in, yes. the, in, the, in the definition of border shop, okay. yes. So now, so now, what is your determination? At, at this moment that they are full right shop according to the compact okay mr hoskins can you do you have the data can you do an analysis as to what the impact on these border shops even throw the exception shops in as to what the impact on their business is i mean we, we can hear from them what their impact is is there any uh, neutral entity, so to speak, that can come and give us an objective analysis about what the impact will be, because that's really what we need to hear. Right. The impact, the only impact I can show you is I get sales information from each one of these on a monthly basis, and I can show you the impact on their purchases and their sales. As far as what their markup is or their profit, I, I'm not privy to any of that information. But the analysis that I can show you would be sales and purchases. I think if you, Sharon, if you could just give us your best effort from your perspective and qualify that perspective that it could be missing these things, I would appreciate it the next meeting. Yes. yes. Okay, very briefly, I agree with Mr. Hoskin. It would be nice if we could have a neutral body come in and do an analysis and <coughs> perhaps a recommendation. Is that what you yeah, yeah, alluded exactly. to? Okay, if there are no other questions by this body, and if you have questions, please put them in writing to Sharon and C.C. Shelley, myself, uh, Mr. Jack Baker, and uh, Speaker Fraley, then and to uh, also Melanie Knight, and of course Diana Turtle, our liaison. So she loves all that work. Um, we will, we are done with this item. We're dispensing with uh, announcements. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Sure. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. We have multiple motions. All those in favor, signify to say aye. aye. All those opposed, we are adjourned.